Don Leotine would pay heavily for his efforts to save lives. Alaska Airlines put him on paid leave from his job, costing him thousands of dollars in regular overtime earnings. Then, in January 2000, John Leotine saw his worst nightmare come true. The kind of accident he had tried to prevent by contacting the federal authorities now took place just off the California coast. After the crash of Flight 261, mechanic John Leotine went back to his own work records. Incredibly, he found that he had a direct link to the crashed airliner. Over two years before, at the plane's last overhaul, he had ordered the jack screw on this particular aircraft be replaced. He then went off shift. When investigators examined the record, they found that Leotine's recommendation had been overruled by the next shift and the plane put back into service. It would be two and a half years before the next overhaul. But time ran out. Two months before the overhaul was due, Flight 261 crashed. Alaska Airlines labeled Leotine a disruptive influence. Later, he sued the company for libel. Alaska settled. But Leotine could no longer work in the industry he loved. I get calls almost every week of somebody saying, should I blow the whistle? And I always tell them, you need to know, you need to be prepared to find another line of work because you will not work in the industry and you will not work in the government. In most cases, it's almost impossible to be a whistleblower and survive your career. As the investigators continued their work into Flight 261, they made another disturbing discovery about the drive to cut costs at Alaska Airlines. To keep planes flying more intensively, Alaska had dramatically extended the intervals between service. This was significant because when a plane is designed, every part has a schedule listing when it is serviced and when it must be replaced. You're supposed to go in and inspect every so many hours, and that's different on parts all over the planes. Some things you have to look at after every flight. Other things have to be inspected every two or three days. By 1996, Alaska Airlines extended the intervals between MD-80 jackscrew lubrications by 400%. Now, there was over 2,500 hours between each service. The extended service intervals were to prove fatal for Flight 261. If you had 600 hours between inspection points and greasing points, we have no chance of ever having a metal-to-metal -metal contact situation. But if you put that out to 2,000 hours or 2,500 hours, now what you do is eat into some of these protective stages, these barriers that we have towards uh, catastrophic failure. In its final report into the crash of Flight 261, the NTSB concluded that Alaska Airlines' extended service intervals for the jack screws on its MD-80s was a significant contributor to the crash. With carriers doing anything to save a dime, uh, maintenance, safety, took a back seat. And that one of the shocking things about Alaska is that they were allowed to increase inspection intervals. And it was very shocking because that is the only way we have safety. The extended maintenance intervals meant that the lack of grease on the jack screw was not discovered before the crash. But now investigators wondered if the failure of the jack screw assembly revealed a basic flaw in the plane's design. They discovered that the MD-80 broke one of the fundamental rules of aircraft design. It was not fail-safe. 
The design philosophy that has made aviation so safe is that we should never ever have a situation in which one catastrophic failure of some component of the airplane causes us to lose the airplane. There was no backup to the jack screw and its nut. Engineers never envisioned a situation on the MD-80 where the jack screw might fail. With inspections every 600 flight hours and replacement every 2,000 hours, the designers did not add an additional redundant backup system. It was utterly laughable that they said it was a redundant system. There's one screw and there's one nut. That's all there is, it's not redundant. The MD-80 continues to fly worldwide, despite the revelation of this potentially dangerous design flaw. The jack screw assembly has not been redesigned. Inspection intervals have been shortened, but airlines still rely on proper maintenance to prevent the same accident happening again. In its final report, the National Transportation Safety Board concluded that the crash of Flight 261 was due to the lack of adequate greasing and the stretched service intervals. When coupled with the design of the jack screw, these failures led to a completely avoidable accident and the loss of 88 lives. Three years after the crash of Flight 261, the relatives and friends of the dead dedicated a permanent memorial at Port Wanami, close to the crash site. Janice Stokes. I think the, the best thing and the only thing in our infinite inadequacy of making up for the loss from this life is to say something that we've been able to say on a lot of other accidents to other grieving families, and that is, those deaths will not be in vain. We will not let them be in vain. Every one of those lives will be made to count in terms of making sure that three, four, five, or 10 other people do not die. It was Carol Carlson. Colleen was different. She was adventurous. And there's nobody like that in our family. Um, and I don't know what we can do except to remember Colleen and to live our lives now a little bit better for her. You know, when I was growing up, we didn't wear seatbelts. There weren't even seatbelts in cars. <laughs> and now we know that we need to wear our seatbelts. We didn't know that much about smoking cigarettes, and now we know that we can't smoke cigarettes. Well, there's a lot to learn about airline safety, too. Ryan Bushy. None of us are the same anymore. It's like walking into a giant storm, wave after wave forming up, coming in, because it never stops. Uh, grief over the loss of a child is not something I wish on anybody. This plane went down because of neglect. It seems like such an unholy type of loss. What a hard way to die. So an airline can, you know, make more money.